लिखित वुड यू बी सेइंग समथिंग और शुड आई स्टार्ट yes bhai i'll be saying something okay hello everyone who are all present over here good evening to all of you i would like to extend a warm welcome on behalf of dev street dev street is an open tech community focused to be the bridge between the freshers in field of tech and the professionals across the world Today we have an extraordinary speaker who has constantly empowered so many communities and helped people evolve by sharing his knowledge and resources. We have Mr. Aditya Thakur, a Flutter developer, YouTuber, and a mentor who has guided more than 400 plus developer communities on Discord, and he is here to share his experience and knowledge with the student community this evening. It's a pleasure to have you for the Dev Street community today, sir. Uh, thank you the so much. Uh, really yes. glad. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, I'll get started by sharing my screen, and then uh, we'll get ahead with the session. So. Uh, let me know, like, once my screen is visible, and if you can take that up. Yes, sir. Your screen is visible. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um. Uh, so, uh, today's event would be on Flutter. So, we'll be doing a walkthrough of building applications in Flutter. And before we get started with it, I would like to tell you about what we have in store for you today. So, we'll be getting started with why Flutter, as in why should be. we be looking at uh, how to you know build applications using flutter and all that stuff and then i'll also tell you like what is flutter how do you get started with it as in how to make your first application in flutter uh, overview of the dart programming language the basics of widgets how everything is done in flutter and uh, we'll conclude it with the resources to learn projects to make in it and lastly also talk about the different opportunities that are available in this field so uh that would be it for today's session who is this session for if you might ask uh this is for people who are completely new or you know unaccustomed to flutter or building mobile applications in general this is for people who are from a web development background wanting to get started into mobile application development or if you are trying to explore a new tech stack so this is the session for you and lastly if you are a intermediate developer as in if you had been working with flutter uh, this might you know provide you certain insights that you might not look up yourself as in we'll be talking about the architecture in brief detail the difference between flutter and preference uh, as in when should you use it or not and lastly the projects part is something i think uh, everyone can use even if you are an experienced developer working with flutter and lastly jobs and internship opportunities i believe that would be a good resource for everyone in today's session so that is about it that is today's agenda and let's get started with it a quick introduction about me um, the team too is has you know told about me and i'm really thankful for the invite by dev street but i am a flutter developer i've been working with flutter for over a year now i've previously interned at a few companies sitepart.in and stan live uh, for whom i have worked on their application mobile applications other than this uh, i also work as a freelance developer i don't particularly do freelancing but if i'm offered a project i uh, work on it on sites i had like i had recently completed one and two are ongoing so that's something i do on the side and other than that i've been a speaker at flutter global summit 
where I talked about building voice applications. I've also continued to participate in different hackathons. And I have a 400 member Discord community where we talk about not only Flutter, but other uh, tech stacks, development and such stuff. And if you want to connect with me, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I am most active there. You can uh, go over to LinkedIn as a Hakur XD and reach out to me there. Or you can, you know, uh, go over to my YouTube channel and follow me there if you are interested in app development or uh, like generally in the tech field. And for these links, you can visit like teamaditya.co. I'll keep coming to this website. So yeah. Let's get started with the session. But before we start with it, I want you to think about all the times, uh, you know, that you have, you normally work on your mobile phone or the times that you use your mobile phone. Most of the stuff that people would do in the past can now be done using mobile applications. And you would notice this difference because uh, I remember like when I was a child and we used to uh, we used to book tickets or airplane tickets we would have to you know get a laptop open a website and go over to uh, this website and book the airplane tickets and also had to check in when you know we were flying before that but now all of this can be done using mobile apps and you can do sh not only that you can shop for the products that you want you can you know look up uh, something that you you know want to purchase on the app and get it done you would rather use the amazon app to buy stuff than you know go over to the website amazon.com and buy from there so that is the accessibility that mobile applications are offering and that is why uh, there is need for mobile application developers because companies are you know tapping into this potential of mobile phones also a very interesting difference in this uh, would be that mobile phones have become better they are able to process better they have a larger memory so you can download multiple applications as compared to your parents mobile device you would have more applications on your mobile phone and that is true like because uh, we all are, are using mobile applications for different purposes and there is you know a a survey according to which that 90% of the time that we spend on our mobile phone is spent in apps. You are using mobile applications for socially connecting with others, Instagram, in our case, watching videos, YouTube, OTT platforms, entertainment, gaming. Yeah, they there are applications that you know let you play games and utilities, productivity, and all that stuff can be done on mobile phone. And you, you you might, you know, use browser for looking something up, but you would rather prefer to visit a website, you know, instead use the mobile application than uh, use the website. So this is an important statistic I want to take up because a lot of students when they are in college, they go with web development uh, because web development is one common field that you will be exposed to. There are a lot of jobs in web development and what I want to you know, show you through the medium of this session is that mobile application development is a very growing field and you can become a mobile application developer very easily. You can build your own mobile applications, put them up on different play stores and reach out to uh, people or customers who would use these mobile applications on a mobile device. An important uh, statistic that most people miss out on is that Nowadays, a lot of people don't even buy a laptop. They are using their mobile applications for, you know, all the stuff, editing videos. A lot of influencers don't have uh, laptops. They would rather edit their videos or, you know, images to post on social media on a mobile phone and on the go, like post this stuff out to their users or to their fan base that they have and be done with it. So as mobile devices become more powerful there is a need for mobile application developers people who can build mobile application and ship that out to millions of users and this is just the start so mobile apps are the king for this session we have established that and uh 
like i web development is a growing field but web development is a very big field and there are a lot of web developers out there but mobile application um, being a mobile developer is something that uh, i want you to take away from this session and it is really get easy to get started with a uh, development if you want to build mobile applications as such so so after you decide that you want to build applications one of the most common path phases you know downloading android studio and building for android you can simply get started by uh, downloading the latest version of android studio having java installed on your pc and just uh, you know creating a new project with an empty activity and you can write code in java or uh, kotlin kotlin is the official language for android development by google and you can ship your application to play store so this is like a common way that most of the people take up when i first started with mobile application development i wanted to make a uh, android games that i would put up on play store and you know place ads on them and such stuff so i started with the open source alternative called g develop and it developed only for android and the thing that i learned you know while researching back then was ki i could simply download android studio drag and drop certain elements from like layouts and widgets some small buttons or a radio button on the user interface and then write the code for the functionality and easily you know build a application put it up on play store and that would be it but the problem was that i am from a college that is in uh, delhi so a lot of people there own an ios device it was a concern for me getting started as i wanted my ios friends to to use my applications but if i was only building for android and i also wanted to ship it to ios i would have to you know instead learn like uh, swift to build for ios devices and which was like a lot of work for me you know i want i had to learn first kotlin java and all that stuff native android development and then also learn swift to build the same application again for my ios friend so it was a lot complex and also like if i needed a website in the future as in if i wanted to build a website for the same applications such as like a landing page sort of a landing page if i wanted to build something like that i would have to learn web development so i am already learning two tech stacks now i would also have to go ahead and learn web development it is a big you know complex thing for a student developer to do and this is one problem that flutter solves basically it solves six problems uh, and it is like one solution for all these different problems if you want to build applications for android ios or web you can use flutter you can also in beta build applications for desktop that is mac os windows and linux so these are all the six different platforms that you can build applications for with one single code base and flutter lets you do that so flutter simply put is google's ui toolkit it is a, a google's ui toolkit uh, that lets you build applications for six different devices they define it as a google ui toolkit although it's a complete sdk software development kit that lets you you know simply write uh, the code once and have it you know exported to all these different devices but again i would come back to it as in why like you should not build for all six devices because uh, we have advantages as in uncertain concerns but definitely like you have this option where you can ship to all these different devices with the same code base with very like little changes and before i go ahead with the comparison between flutter and react native i want to come back to uh, the flutter website so you can go over to flutter or you know search for flutter on google and go over to the official website which is flutter.dev and here you would see like uh, it lets you design beautiful applications ui is one of their uh, major thing as flutter is google's ui toolkit and you can build applications for mobile web and embedded devices from a single code base the thing about flutter is that it is open source so you can also visit their code uh, or their github organization where you'll find all these repositories and if in future you want to contribute you can even contribute code to the repositories that we have here there is the official flutter one which has all the code 
uh, there are samples and the Flutter engine that you can look up. The top three features that Flutter, uh, you know, markets is the fast development. A big concern was, you know, when you are writing code, you also want to see the changes reflect on screen, like uh, live on the app. So Flutter lets you do that with their feature called Hot Reload. Uh, so what it does is basically when you write code, you can see the changes by doing a quick hot reload and it would show you what is happening on screen. How would it look? And you can change colors and uh, text quickly and see the changes uh, reflect live on the emulator or the device that you're running on. We'll come back to this uh, in the demonstration. And one other feature that is expressive and flexible UI. Uh, the thing here is that they have a layered architecture, which allows you to have full customization. Flutter lets you control every pixel on screen. So you have, you know, uh, flexible designs as in whatever you want to build, you can build with Flutter. You can build material designs uh, or you, if you are building for uh, Apple, you can build even better designs and uh, tap into the whole UI stuff that is offered by Flutter. And there is also native performance. Now, this is like a very important point as Flutter widgets incorporate all the critical platform differences. Now, there are certain differences in different devices like Android and iOS render differently. So Flutter, like uh, what is what it does is basically compiles to native code as in the code that you will write, it will be compiled natively. And it also takes into account all the different differences that we have such as in scrolling or navigation or fonts between Android and iOS. So with all that, you know, um, with all these impressive features that we have, uh, Flutter is really easy to get started with. It has a very uh, small learning curve as in you can build while you just learn Flutter. So I, I did that as in when I first started with Flutter, I was learning while I was building projects. So that helped me a lot because it was easier to learn Flutter and quickly implement it in code. So you can refer documentation whenever you are struck or you can search for one of the biggest strength of Flutter is its community because Flutter is very young, like it's around three uh, to four years old and the community has helped it grow because it was the community members who are, you know, writing tutorials, making videos and all that stuff that you can refer to and quickly solve an issue that you might be facing. So by clicking on this tab, you can go over to the Flutter documentation. Here you will find all the different stuff. There are cookbooks, uh, widgets that are available to you. And I'll come back to widgets, why widgets are so important. But before that, I want you to know what are the different companies that are using Flutter. So Google uses it for its own applications. The Google Pay application is made in Flutter. If you have been using that, uh, like if if you are, you know, impressed by the seamless experience on Google Pay, you can thank Flutter for that. There is eBay that, uh, you know, uses it. And BMW, the My BMW app is made in Flutter. Alibaba Group is using Flutter in China and Capital One. All these companies use Flutter. At home, we have uh, Zerodha using Flutter. So Zerodha handles multiple like transactions each day. If you are into stocks or, uh, you know, so you might know like the application lets you, you know, manage all your portfolios and it does it seamlessly. So Zerodha uses Flutter. <clears throat> they had written an article on how they build their application within a few months span and shipped it out to millions of users that they have. And with that, uh, a quick, you know, overview of the Flutter 2.2, which basically was the latest edition, like, it's not the latest as in it was the latest big edition of Flutter. So in Flutter 2.2, they introduced a lot of stuff that you can refer. Uh, one thing they did was in Flutter 2 was releasing web in a stable version. So now whenever you create a project, if you do not specify certain flags, uh, your project would work on iOS, Android and web. So all these are in stable versions. You can build for all these three different platforms using Flutter in stable branch. So that is it, a quick overview about Flutter and you can refer the flutter.dev, but I'll come back to the documentation before I come to it, a uh, simplified comparison, a quick overview of why Flutter and when should you, you know, work with React Native. So if you're coming from a web development background 
or generally like you might have this concern as in when should you be using like it's either you either write your application code in native native is good like native would work well if you are writing in java or kotlin you would build the application for android it will work like uh, how it's supposed to be it will work good and if you're working with ios only then go ahead with swift you'll write code in swift but if you decide that you want to use a cross platform framework by that i mean like if you want to build a application like if you are working on a startup you want to build your application that you want to run both on android as well as uh, ios so you might need to choose between a cross platform framework and this is like a simplified comparison flutter has like good ui rendering react native uh uses javascript and they have uh, a lot of ui stuff available as well so it's like good but flutter in comparison is ranked more they have like advantage in data processing and synchronization and a lot of big companies actually use react native like if you are familiar with coinbase which is a cryptocurrency startup and really big company they are using react native for their own purpose a lot of companies that are established have been using react native but there are also companies that initially started with react native but shifted to flutter because the android build of react native wasn't as good it might be good for ios but it wasn't as good on android whereas flutter since it's by google and you know the sdk uh, android sdk is powered by google so it was like better uh, building applications in flutter that were working seamlessly good on both android as well as ios so there is also the programming area that we need to take into account language flutter uses dart now dart is a very powerful language it is used by google's adsense so google's adsense is their most profitable as in all of like most of the revenue that google has comes from placing ads and adsense department uses dart for their own uh, stuff that they have going on and flutter also like every thing all the code that you write in flutter would be written in dart and react native uses javascript so javascript if you are coming from web dev uh, you might know like how good that language is and how many people uh, you know are familiar with javascript really easy get, to get started with so mostly like if people from web development ask me like what should they choose in terms of cross platform framework i recommend them react native because they are already familiar with javascript and if you are you know completely unaccustomed or if you do not know anything about development flutter i would recommend you flutter because dart is like a lot of other object oriented programming languages really easy to learn and you can you know quickly get started you can not only build mobile applications but you can also build websites with flutter so if you are doing dsa on the side you want to you know learn development for uh, getting a good job then flutter is the way to go if you are otherwise looking for a cross platform framework that would render seamlessly on both i android and ios flutter is really good for you and there are other stuff like open source libraries since flutter and react native like react native has a very old community people have been using it for a long time so it has advantage when it comes to uh, libraries and stuff but flutter has a growing community a lot of people are building the different plugins that you might need and shipping them out so you can use all these plugins in your application and that is it a quick overview of flutter so basically everything all the code that you write in flutter is written in dart and they have like material for android cupertino for uh, ios devices and you everything you build is made into widgets rendered the different animation painting and gestures and then it is natively compiled by the engine so we saw the flutter engine in the github repositories and the same engine you know uh, compiles the different code natively so you have a seamless experience on the devices and coming to the point that i have as in it's not about building for six platforms the advantage is here here is that you can build multiple flutter apps with different user flow but focusing on the same business logic the point being like if you wrote a application you know that uh, like added two numbers and you have a function that adds these numbers and you want to run this application on the different devices 
so you might want to you know change the ui a bit like on mobile device it must be thinner like it it is like fit for a mobile device if you're running it on web there are different configuration if it's full screen then it should look differently if someone minimizes the tab it should look differently and if you're running it on desktop there must might be small ui changes or tweaks that you might want to do but at heart like uh, the business logic or everything that you will write in dart for uh, the user flow and such stuff it would remain same and that is the advantage here you don't have to you know change this user uh, flow user logic or business logic every time you want to run it on a different device and that is the advantage so the goal is not to like you know make one application have it running on different devices but the goal is uh, but the advantage is that you're saving on all this code that you would have to otherwise write again and again like if you were building an android app you would have to write for that ios app you would have to again write some code for that so you save a lot on that stuff so in flutter everything is a widget now if you're a flutter developer you'll come across this code i don't know who said it and it's not like something official but everything that you see in flutter is a widget the code is written in dart this is the symbol for dart programming language and this is the flutter symbol so everything that you will uh, write is a widget it's written in dart programming language and we want to understand like what these widgets are so widgets basically are like lego blocks and if you are building a mobile application what would happen is like you will have a screen and you will place one block on top of the other like if you want to insert some text there would be a text widget if you want to insert an image there would be a image widget and so on and so forth so you just put this widget one on top of the other and you get a whole app you're navigating from one widget to other like changing screens and stuff so this is like the basic of it as in widgets are these lego blocks that you pile one on top of the other and you get a complete app and that is like the easiest explanation but i also show it uh with code and yeah uh if you have any questions so far you can let me know uh, we are 30 minutes into this session um so what i'll do now is i'll create a new empty folder uh like call it demo and to install flutter on your mobile device what you can do is basically you can go over to get started and go over to install so this is the flutter.dev docs slash get started and go over to install now installation is very simple whatever uh operating system you have you can choose accordingly and if you're working on windows you can go over to windows install now here you will see the system requirements you need a windows 7 and some minimum disk space is required and what you have to do is you have to get the flutter sdk so it will uh download a zip file which would have all the Flutter SDK in it. And what you want to do is you have to go over to your C drive and go over to users, like go to this PC and go down to like, you can go over to users or as I have here, I have Flutter under a folder called source. So you can go over to ASUS documents and extract it at a location that you wish it to be and then what you have to do is basically update the path like the path uh, set the environment variables you need to insert that flutter sdk variable there pin and that is it like uh, lastly you can run flutter doctor so flutter doctor is a very common command it basically tells you like if everything is configured properly or not and you would also need a id so you can either use android studio or you can you know use vs code so if you have been working with um, web development so you might be familiar with vs code you can use that instead but if you are a beginner i would recommend using android studio because it's also it would also help you a lot in installation because uh, a lot of the stuff that you would need would be installed by android studio uh, and it will also have like certain tools that you can easily access if you're working for the first time with flutter so i'll recommend android studio if you're a beginner uh you can use vs code if you're familiar with it you might have to install certain extensions uh, to make your life easy 
and for this session i would be using vs code because android studio is a lot heavy on your cpu and i don't want like my screen freezing uh during the session so i would use uh, vs code for this session although i prefer android studio personally i work with it uh because it's easy navigation for me and i have been working with it for a long time so so what i want to do is i'll go over to my command prompt as in after you have done the installation and got the flutter sdk you can run the flutter version command so this should take some time to run but it will show you like the version of the flutter sdk that you have installed on your device and i have a flutter 2.5 which is on channel master and uh the engine version it also it is also showing and there is the dart so we haven't talked about dart as much and i believe it is important that we take that up before we go into it so for dart 2 you can quickly search dart and it will take you to the dart programming language which is the official uh, website for it and if you are working with it for the first time what you can do is basically go over to docs and go down to language okay you want to go over to core libraries and go to uh, no you want to go over to language and go to tour so this is a tour of dart language what you will notice is basically dart is a lot similar to object oriented programming languages that you might have done like c or java and it has like a basic dart program would look something like this this is the main function as we have in other programming languages the first function to get control and you can pass in like the number or if you want to you know print integer this is the function that we have defined void keyword uh, we have seen in it in a few other languages and it's like no return value so it's saying void and simply pass in the number so this is uh, a simple overview and this is like very quick to go through if you want to know how comments are done what is the void keyword why int int is a data type and you can quickly go over this um, like the tour of the language and it will show you most of the stuff one of the new additions to flutter is null safety and which you will encounter as you go but uh, you can do that quick tour of dart language and you will figure that out a lot i'll also show you like what is dart and how to write some basic code in it uh, right now and what i'll do is first i need to create a new flutter project so first i'll navigate to that folder we have created so i'll go over to desktop first and here uh, on this desktop i have this uh, demo folder that i had just created this is the demo folder and now what i want to do is i want to run this command called flutter create demo app right so flutter create command is used when you want to create a new flutter project and this should take some time what it is basically doing is it, it is writing code for me and it will write around 80 plus files uh, it wrote 81 files and that is done now you can you know just uh, navigate to that particular folder and run flutter run and it would launch that uh, application but what we want to do is basically open this up uh, in vs code or if you're working with android studio the process is even simpler you can create a new project and from this uh, vs code i'll just open that folder go over to my desktop go down to demo so this is like the project structure of a new flutter project that you will create you will have a lib folder that contains all the code you will see a main dot dart and this is like a starter project that you get whenever you create a new project so this is written by the flutter team now uh, they also have put in the different comments as in how everything works but all the code that we'll write would go inside this main dot dart file inside this lib folder and then you would notice is that there is a android folder this basically would have the gradle files if you're coming from android uh, side of things so you might be familiar with gradle but all the implementation for android goes in here and there is also ios folder so sometimes you need to configure certain stuff in flutter and you can work natively as well that is an option to you too and 
you have a lib folder and the test folder this basically has some tests written by default uh but if you are you know working on a bigger app or if you want to write tests so you can use the same folder and then we have the web so web has the web uh, uh like implementation for your flutter app and there are certain other files that I want you to know. One is the pubspec.yaml. So in pubspec.yaml, what happens is if you want to add certain dependencies to your Flutter app, we use the pubspec.yaml. By default, it has certain commented out code. And this is like a very important file uh, when you're working with Flutter. Like most of the configuration stuff goes in here. And if you want to add certain assets to your application you can simply add them from here so this is like a important file but mostly the code that will go would go inside this lib folder in main dot dot and that is what we'll be working with today so what i'll do is basically i'll create a new terminal and uh, let's get started with it let's try running this project and by default it should launch on chrome because right now i do not have a device connected with it so what would happen is like after you install flutter you also need to install certain emulators you can have a android emulator running so that you know uh, you will download android studio you will get an android emulator and you can run the application on that you can run on like a real device like i have my mobile phone here what you need to do is basically turn on usb debugging and then you can run your applications on that or you can run it on web like Chrome or Edge, like these are also emulators available to you and it should take some time, but this is like the demo app that would launch up on local host. So since I had not connected an external device, it like tried to find all the different emulators available to it. Chrome was available, so it ran the application on Chrome. And on web, the default home application should look something like this. So you have the title here, this is a basic text like you have pushed the button and you have a floating action button and when you will tap on it you'll see the number that is at the center of the screen increase by one so this is like very uh simple application that comes by default i'll also show you how to run the same application on mobile device but what happens is like when i'm uh streaming and also you know uh running the application so it takes up a lot of cpu space and that is why i hadn't connected a mobile device but what I want to show you, it will something look something similar on the mobile device, something like this. And it would be like, you'll have the button at the bottom and when you'll increment it, it will show the, the counter. So let's like quickly go over uh, like what we have for the code here. The first line that is here is a simple import statement. We are importing the material dot dot. So we had seen back in the flutter overview that material and cupertino is there material is for uh, you know android and cupertino we have ios and certain builds material lets you tap into a lot of like ui elements in flutter so if i'll go over to material if i search for material on google like uh, material.io is the official website and you'll have like all the different things about the material design so there are different uh, elements like buttons and such stuff that you, your Flutter uses. There are different components from material that you can use in your uh, mobile application. So that is why we are importing material here. And this is like a simple import statement. When writing code, when starting to write code in a new uh, Dart file, you have to import material to use the different widgets like the stateless widget and the stateful widget. So what we have here next is this main functions of void main let me also increase the size okay so we have the main function here main is the first function to get control and it basically uh, does this run app which takes in the my app widget so here my app is a widget and it is like uh, written as a class Maya, which extends a stateless widget and this uh, stateless widget and stateful widget. I'll come back to these as in what these are. But what you need to know is this Maya returns something. So what it returns is basically this material app. Uh, material app is one like 
uh, material app what it does is basically it has this title and theme properties that you can use and also it has a home so when you'll first load the application what would happen is like the main function would run uh, your my app widget my app is the base widget what it would do is it would return this material app so you can think of material something as sort of like a blank canvas where you will specify the theme and you know a certain home so this home takes in the my home page which would build all of this like all of this everything that you see on screen uh it will have this increment counter uh it would have this button that we see the app bar with the title and all of this stuff so right now it might be intimidating because uh, when i first uh, launched the home project i didn't get a lot of it and certainly uh, like going over this would not help so what i'll do is i'll get rid of this uh, my home page uh, widget and i will also like uh, get rid of this my from the home page and remove this <clears throat> so like writing code in flutter what you can do is basically type in like state less and uh, certain extensions would help you write code so you can type in home page now what i have done is basically i have this is my emulator this was the default code that i was given i got rid of the whole widget so what it would do is it would destroy all of this everything that we see on screen right now what I did is I replaced it with a empty widget, empty block, a Lego block. And now if I'll save this app, like save, it would do this performing hot restart. This is by default. And what it would do is it would remove uh, everything that we saw on the screen initially. And it would be empty. How do I know it's empty? Because I'm seeing this debug banner, but nothing is being displayed on the screen because this returns a container container is empty and there is nothing inside it so we see nothing on screen now let me come back and talk about uh what are these widgets why should we be talking about it and what are all the different widgets that you might want to take up so widget is a lego block you pile one on top of the other you get a complete app that is the simplest definition there are two types of widgets one is the stateless one is the stateful stateless widget so as the name suggests stateless widgets la uh, lack something so they are without state and there are also stateful widgets which are full with the state so state is something as in you know if you have assigned a certain color to a widget like this is my lego block this was here when i you know first started with it i gave it certain color so by the end of the application it would have the same color to it like it would still stay brown and you can you know casually uh, put one widget on top of the other and it would have the same properties that you initially defined it with you cannot update those things as in if you were working instead with a stateful widget initially like let us say you had a certain purple color throughout the life cycle now this baby uh to becoming an old person this is to show you that stateful widgets have a life cycle and you can tap into this life cycle to update the state as in you can update certain properties colors and make it something else like initially it was this uh, by the end of this life cycle it became a brown uh, widget so you can't do the similar thing with state less widgets the advantage here is like if you are not tapping into this state so you should rather use a stateless widget like normally i would use a stateless widget uh, less on the cpu i'm not changing anything my widget would remain the same the lego block would have certain properties there's not much changing i'll use a stateless widget but if i want to update state as in if i want to change certain properties as we go or tap into the life cycle of it so i'll use a stateful widget instead this was like a brief overview as in there is a lot that you will figure out as you continue to write code in flutter like it will take some time but uh, as you write more and more build more application you will know when to use a stateless widget or when to use a stateful widget but uh, the rule of thumb is like go with a stateless widget if you do not want uh, a lot of rendering to happen in your flutter application like uh, if you're building a basic application that doesn't update a lot like you can use a stateless widget if you want to update certain things change colors properties or like work with the life cycle go with the stateful widget so 
this is like the basic stuff but let us come back uh, to our code and what we had done is basically uh, got rid of the home page and replaced it with the empty container now one particular you know uh, thing that i want to do or take up is a uh, a widget called scaffold now i'll be talking about the different widgets some common uh, ones that you need to know when you're working with flutter one is the scaffold widget now you'll come across this widget a lot and what it does is basically it gives you all these properties that you can tap into one is the app bar so i'll type in app bar and this is how like code is written so you have you defined a widget you will specify a return for it typed in scaffold and then for this particular scaffold you will specify a property now you typed in app bar and passed an empty app bar to it if i were to save it it would do this hot uh, restart thing and you'll see like a app bar appear on top of screen this is the blue app bar that we are seeing and let us also keep it here uh let me also make this a bit small mm. <clears throat> okay let's keep it like together sort of and what i can do is i can specify another property so i'll tap in body or let us also first experiment with background color so you'll know like what i'm talking about background so i'll type in like if i want to use a certain property what i can do is i can keep my mouse uh, on the scaffold and check out all the different properties available to me so let me keep my mouse here and you will see like all these different properties are available to you one you will notice is this background color and you will type in this property name and you will also know like what this particular property takes so it takes in color so i can come to this scaffold type in b and it will show me like background color is available to it so i'll specify that property now i need to pass in a color you can pass in a color by typing in colors this color comes from the material uh, that we had imported earlier type in colors dot and now you can uh, you can see like this is the material color and you can select a particular color that you want it to be so let us say like it is black now using this uh, thing that you see floating here you can either choose to hot restart it or you can you know hot reload it so if i do like a hot reload it is performing a hot restart i don't know why it's saying that but it should have done like a hot uh, reload hot reload is when you want to quickly see a change so you can do hot reload for a certain smaller changes as in if you were doing like a color change or something and you can use hot restart when you are uh, trying to you know change certain big things as in if you're trying to import a new package or something so uh, while we wait for that uh, like there is the app bar that you have the floating action that we were seeing initially on the screen so you can notice you can know now that with the background color property the background of this scaffold which was initially white was updated to this black color and we still have our app bar which is not affected by this color change and we also saw like the floating action button the small button that we were clicking to increment is also part of the scaffold and you can see it here floating action button uh, this is the floating action button and there is also a certain property called body now body takes in certain widgets now our scaffold becomes our base widget now we can specify widgets that we want to pile on top of it so this is our scaffold now i can have certain widgets that i want to show up on the screen or center of the screen and i can pile these widgets so one widget that i would be talking about is the container we saw a container when we had created an empty widget container is a sort of like a you can specify certain properties and it is like a very common widget that you'll come across while working with flutter and it was also a really cool widget like i use containers a lot and with container you can again keep your mouse on top of it and check out the different properties available to you uh, there is the color property that you can specify but there is also like a width and a height property so let's use all these properties 
how to use a property type in the property name specify a value for it like height 100 and then a color and this is that easy like you'll type in a property name specify its value and so on and so forth so now if i again save my file it would uh, hot, rela uh, hot reload it for me and there you see it like a, a red container of like height 100 and width appear on top of the screen so this is like a very simple way of doing things in flutter one thing i wanted to show is uh, i'll quickly go over to flutter uh go to the website and go to docs here if you'll go down to widgets catalog you can check out all the different widgets available to you. Uh, some of the most common widgets that you want to know of uh, are under layout. And like, if you want to display certain text, there is like the text widget that you can use. Like uh, instead of specifying a container, I could have just written text and type in hello world. If this is sort of like your first application that you're building you can just type in hello world and it should show hello world here so you can see like a uh, hello world appear here and this is like a very simple application right so you can use the text widget and show text in your flutter application uh, there is the basics which is that you need to know app bar we already saw the app bar we saw the container as well that is specified here uh, but there are other widgets that you can use we also saw text and scaffold so scaffold is like a basic widget it lets you have a app bar a body a floating action button and also a bottom navigation so in certain apps like instagram if you use it you might have seen like a bottom navigation so you can do that with a scaffold now we want to look at certain like layout widgets the first is a column and the second uh, is a row widget so let's go over this quickly and there is also like a image widget so similarly as we saw the text widget you can also have an image appear on screen by using the image widget let's quickly like uh, check out uh, the layout widgets so right now my scaffold was having only like one widget it had this uh, text hello world or it had that you know small red container that we saw so most of the applications you know don't generally are not you know limited to just one widget like you would not see just one text appear on top of screen so that is when you need the layout widgets so what you can do is you can type in column c-o-l-u-m-n and what you'll notice is like so far we had been working with widgets which only had one child like body here only took one child but column on the other hand takes in children in flutter everything is sort of like a widget tree so you have your parent widgets and then you have children widget the ones that you were you know using like lego blocks keeping one top of the other so that is why we call them children because you have a par parent widget and you can have either like only one widget as a child or multiple children uh, as its children so inside this uh, children i can again create a container again the same thing i can type in width specify the value for it type in height specify the value for it and type in the color i can also give uh, that color a value so the advantage with this is like you can use multiple uh, containers inside a column so if i were to you know copy this and paste it again with a different color as in not colors dot red but instead use something like yellow i guess and if i were to again save the file when i hot reload it you'll notice like there are two two widgets on screen one is the red and one is the yellow color and you can have like multiple children ahead so let me again save this file and you'll have like a three uh, children one on top of the other now column what it does is basically arranges them vertically so you have your first widget coming up then the second and the third similarly there is also a row widget so you can type in row replace like column with it it also has these children property which takes in all these different containers so if i were to you know 
uh, hot we started you'll notice like the children are now arranged like this so they are arranged horizontally and you'll have all the different children available here so this is like basic layout stuff in flutter uh, you can use a column row to arrange widgets there is also another popular widget called stack uh, which is basically used to stack one on top of the other but we won't cover that for now and this is like a basic stuff uh, not nothing like uh, i won't go too deep into it for that i want to share uh, resources that you know if you want to learn flutter how can you actually learn it so we're done with the uh, basic stuff but if you want to uh, learn flutter i have like made it into sort of like a ebook that you can refer so what you can do is basically go over to uh, teamaditya.co and here like if you go over to this website you can get a free flutter resource book so flutter resource book has all these resources uh, you can simply get it for free and type in zero here get it for free and what you'll have to do is you'll have to basically type in your email id and it would get you this resource book so so you can download it to your device and it should take some time to download but uh, after you have it uh, like you can quickly open it so there are a lot of free flutter courses available that you can learn flutter for free uh, there is this free, free pre flutter and dart everything you need to know all these are like uh, either udemy courses or there is also one uh, course by free code camp this is like a youtube video that you can refer and uh, then there there is like the flutter tutorial for beginners using dart there are official code labs and all these resources are mentioned here uh, if you would rather do it from Udemy, so you can refer this udemy.com, everything you need to know, and it is like a free tutorial. Uh, don't have to pay anything, and you can also check out other courses that are listed here. If you would rather do a paid Flutter course, you can check out the complete 2021 Flutter Development Bootcamp. So it should be around like uh, around 500 or like uh, during sale, or if if it's 3000 like during uh normal days but uh, it is like a very good course i did that initially now with null safety it might be a bit outdated but there are resources out there that would help you uh, cover the null safety part and then there are youtube channels that you can you know refer to if you are learning flutter the most popular is fun by pavan kumar so he has all these tutorials flutter tutorials for beginners to advance a complete playlist and then there are certain projects that you can do like a radio app and other stuff. So I keep referring this as you can see, like I seen a lot of videos from Codepur and there are other channels that I have mentioned here that you can look up. Then there are, you know, if you would instead, you know, read about Flutter. So Medium is one of the biggest resource when working with Flutter. A lot of uh, developers write their experience, write about stuff and you can also refer blogs like uh, by Pooja Bhomik. She has written a lot about basic widgets, uh, five tools like that you can use. And her, there is a very popular article by her on basic widgets in Flutter. So how to work with basic widgets like uh, app bar and other such stuff in Flutter. So you can uh, refer her publication here. And lastly, uh, you know, if you want to uh, get access to resources, you can join us on our Discord server. Uh, the same link would guide you there. Like you could join us on Discord server if you are a mobile developer because communities for mobile application developers are limited. There are a lot of web developer communities out there. But for mobile developers, there aren't many. So you can join if you want to. And one thing you can do with Flutter after you learn it is build UI clones in it. So you can get started by building a UI clone of Spotify or Netflix. Although I don't personally recommend UI clones because you can't, you don't, you, it's difficult to mention it as a project because there is already an established app. So what I'll recommend instead is going over to a design website like dribble.com 
and checking out the different mobile application designs that we have here and trying to replicate one of these in flutter so when you first start to learn flutter after you know the basic widgets and stuff you can try out the ui stuff so you can try to place these widgets accordingly so that they build like beautiful ui clone and stuff so this is like when you're starting out then you can go into certain advanced features in flutter try to work with local files and audio integration build a music player so this is like a project idea stuff that i'm doing right now try to work with these local files try to see how flutter interacts with the different files on mobile device after you're done with the ui and everything so you can work with apis like http and try to make calls requests and tags so you can build a new app for that and then a uh, database is like firebase there these are all the different options that you have available but after you're done with ui uh, some basic implementation of like local files http and other api calls you can work with authentication data and storage in databases there are different databases available out there firebase is the most common we use with flutter mostly like most flutter devs use firebase but uh, firebase has like you can also use like open source alternatives like superbase app right or you can build a custom backend if you're familiar with node.js and lastly you can work with sqf lite so this is like a local database that you can use in flutter after you're done with this go ahead with state management learn about provide a river pod like we have seen that widgets were either stateless or stateful but you also need to manage state in flutter which is like a common topic that you will uh, keep coming across in your development journey so go ahead learn a flutter state management and to you know solidify your learning about state management you can build an e-commerce app you would have to build a cart for your application and it will tell you a lot about how state is managed and you would also learn about payment integration like paying for certain, certain stuff and if you go ahead and work in freelancing so an e-commerce app is like a good project to have because it tells you a lot about working with most of the things in flutter like you're managing images the different text and elements and you're also using state management so that is a lot of work and lastly if you want to you know work with animations in flutter or physics you can go ahead and make a game it will tell you a lot about how animations are done how uh, physics and motion is done in flutter there are other things that you can use like rai for animation or you know lottie files in your flutter uh, there is also a flutter game engine uh, that you can check out and lastly like internships and jobs in flutter so a lot of companies as in a lot of startups hire for flutter developers there are certain big companies that have started to you know put out openings uh, for flutter devs and you can check them out on linkedin but uh, mostly jobs are in startups or you know companies that are building their mobile applications and uh, if you want to after you learn flutter i would recommend like while you're learning flutter i would recommend that take up an internship um, at a startup or at a company because internships teach you a lot it, they give you like real hands on experience on working with certain stuff mentors uh, are really cool to have so the first internship that i did i was lucky to have a good uh, person you know overseeing me so he told me a lot about how can i make my ui designs responsive so that is really integral and uh you can you know learn a lot of stuff when you're bu building a real uh, world application because you have all these users that you wouldn't have for your personal projects so definitely like build your profile around it as in after you're learning flutter or while you're learning for flutter try to share your learnings to linkedin or other social media platforms try to take up certain like developer challenges as in 30 days 100 days uh, on twitter and try to connect with other people in your domain if you want to connect with me you can go over to linkedin go to aditya thakur xd and connect with me there if you want to get started with flutter you can again join in our uh, discord community teamaditya.co you'll find the link there and that is it right so this is it for the session So thank you so much for any questions that you might have. You can take them up in chat uh, or join the community using the link. Sir, we have a few questions for you here. Yeah, yeah I'll be sure. displaying uh, them. 
Give me a minute. I'll drink some water. Yeah, please. So we have Just Data like here asking mm -hmm. does Flutter apps takes a lot of space or not? Yeah, they did actually, you know, uh, the last when I have been working with Flutter since, you know, the Flutter version one back then they did take a lot of space compared to the native APKs that we had. But more recently, like the app engine is optimized so much that the Flutter apps now take, uh, you know, a little bit less, not little bit, I would say like a lot. And there are also recently released, like uh, I read the article recently. It's on how you can limit the size uh, of your Flutter application. The recent changes to Flutter engine has reduced the app APK size by a lot. Like they had a certain percentage on it. I don't remember, but it has been improved a lot since then. So it, they take a lesser space now as of version two here. Yeah. We have what, are the, asking, what are the disadvantages of Flutter? So if you are, you know, working with native side of the things, one of the uh, like if someone asks me, like if they're building for Android, I recommend them to go ahead with native because cross platform frameworks, if you're building for both Android as well as iOS, there are certain disadvantages in, you know, having the native feel on your mobile application. But since Flutter natively compiles this code, it is actually uh, good in certain cases. As in a lot of companies had to switch later on, but uh, there are certain disadvantages. Um, as in this performance, I would say because native Android devs would prefer if you're building for Android, they would always say like, go ahead with native. If you are a Flutter developer, I would recommend taking up Java or Kotlin, either of the native side of things to know better. Um, like recently I participated in this hackathon. So what happened was like, since Flutter is young, uh, some of the SDKs haven't been built for Flutter. So we were participating in this hackathon. There was this whole suit. But if you had to use it, we had to work with Android and iOS. There was SDK available for Android, iOS and React Native, but none for Flutter. So in terms of community, I think there are certain disadvantages. But yeah. What's actually hot restart and hot reload? So what happens is basically uh, in Flutter, we don't have a drag and drop option like we have in Java or Kotlin. Like uh, I showed the Android Studio thing that we had. So you can drag and drop the UI and see, but in Flutter, uh, when you're writing code, you might want to see the changes reflect directly on screen. So there is a hot restart and hot reload. Hot reload is done when the changes are like changes in color, changes in text. You can quickly see these changes on appear. Like as you're writing code, you can see these changes appear by doing a hot reload. And this is like a very uh, marketed feature of Flutter. Write the code and see the changes display quickly on screen. There is also hot restart. Now we do hot restart. Like if you're developing regularly in Flutter, we do hot restart when we add certain files that you know want that you want to transfer from code um, to uh, the uh, the emulator. Like if I'm working on a mobile device, uh, I inserted certain new images or I added a new package. Uh, so I'll have to do a hot restart. That would transfer those files. The advantage here is like. When you will do a hot reload, it would only build those widgets that were, you know, changed by it. Like if I really change certain text, I don't want the whole screen to build that particular widget will only be built. So that is like hot reload and restart. Can XD plugin to convert the UI with design to code is really useful. I would not recommend that because the problem is uh, a lot of these plugins that convert design to code, they come with like a default uh, configuration as in they set all these particular parameters to how you have it on design. And these are like hard coded values. So I don't recommend doing that. Uh, I would rather recommend you build the UI in Flutter by writing code yourself. Uh, there are a lot of plugins. Like if you're working with Figma, you'll have uh, plugins for that. If you're working with Adobe XD, so you have for that. But I would recommend instead doing it in code because um, you would have to at certain places make it responsive like mobile devices differ in size weight height and if you'll use these hard coded values from the different plugins that they generate they would just break if you're running it on a separate device or a separate um, 
platform i would say so yeah i would not recommend it but they do convert like sometimes like while learning for <clears throat> while learning flutter for development why not kotlin so the advantage is again cross platform and that is like the most differentiating factor if you are a flutter developer i would recommend going back to basic of things like uh why i started with flutter was because i was working on this um app for my college uh, club and we wanted to ship it out quickly now flutter has a very small learning curve if you want to get started with mobile app development quickly you want to ship out to android as well as ios users you can quickly do that in flutter with kotlin what you can do is basically build only for android so that is the uh, disadvantage here although if you are a flutter developer i would recommend going back to the natives like i have learned native android development so you will have to come back to native but flutter is for you know shipping out applications for android and ios cross platform is the advantage here no other reason really informative thank you uh thank you so much <laughs> thank you. so i i guess like that that would be it yeah our team will be posting the feedback link we would like to look into the feedback to get ourselves better sure uh and feel free to like you know if you have any questions after this to connect with me on linkedin uh or reach out to me there and thank you so yeah, much we'll thank be you. sending all the links for the participants to connect with you sir yeah, yeah. thanks to aditya kakur sir yeah. for accepting our invite and being here with us here this evening yeah. we hope all of you guys got a clear idea about flutter thanks for all your time kindly fill the feedback form which is there in the chat box thank you